This is Code.org and a sales analyst wants to find the total sales for top best-selling games. Is video games or just games? It is. It's video games. Uh, I hope it's Breath of the Wild Zelda. Ooh, Minecraft's also a solid pick. Maybe I'm pandering now. Anyways, all right, let's keep going. They have the following. Yep. Where each row represents North America, Europe, Japan, others. Yes. Each column represents Wii Sports. Super Mario, Mario Kart. I I know I'm noticing this is just Nintendo, y'all, which is fine, respectable. Also, where is Zelda? I feel disappointed. But all right, Pokemon. Yep, yep, cool. Write the method total sales to return a string, and that's a fancy word to say well letters. Uh, for each game to return a string containing the total. Okay, so I bet that's this is step two. It says right here. So let's go over to game sales. Ah. And step one. Now, let's keep in mind what this is, right? It's a 2D array. It's what we've been discussing. And when thinking about it, bloop, this is row zero. This is row one. This is row two. And this last row is row three. And then for columns, it is zero, one, two, three, and four. Now, when doing a 2D array, what comes first? Well, the row actually comes first. So if I want to get uh, 29, I would do array 0, index 1. All right? Just quick reminder there. Let's drive, dive into this. So find the sum of each column to get the total sales. Okay? And we're not going to be past any array. Now, since it says for each... Yep, they give us this. Since it says for each... It means one row at a time. So whatever video game this is, that... Okay, got it. And then they give us this great example, guys, of a nested for loop of how to do this. And I'm going to follow that pattern for... Actually, I'm going to do one better. I'm going to copy this, and then I'm going to discuss it. So this is absolutely what we're going to want to do. Now, I want to explain it a bit. They're using the column first here. I actually dislike that unless. Oh, no, I do like that because each column represents the game. So we have to go through the rows. So this might be Mario Kart. This might be Pokemon. And so we want to add them up like this. OK, got it. So we're going to start with column zero. And then we go, once column is equal to zero, we iterate through the rows. Row will be equal to zero. It's less than array length. Row plus plus. So we start with zero. And then what's our array here? Well, we have sales, right? So instead of this, I need sales for the name of my array. Keep in mind, this says sales zero. And what that actually means is it wants the length of a row, right? So sales zero is going to return this array here or if i look over here it returns this and this is a really useful way to organize it because it helps right this is the first index of the array and it's a row right so row zero is that whole thing we get the length of the row which is five for a zero to four index length is five column has to be less than five and we're going to go up by one each time now, we need a value to sum these up, so I'll go ahead and do... We're going to have to reset it each time, so each column is decisions, decisions. Yeah, we're going to do it like this. Now, I've seen this a lot, and this is fine, so double sum equals zero, and then uh, sum equals zero. And that makes sense, but there's no reason to declare it out here since we're just going to be setting it to zero each time anyways. And then what we need is the string. So string containing the result. Uh, I'll just say result. Uh, maybe I could describe that better. And I'll set it equal to an empty string. Like result. I'm going to call this info because it's the info about the sums. Okay, so now we need to add up the amount being sold. So I'm going to do sum is going to be equal to whatever sum used to be equal to, and then I need to add to it. What am I adding to it? Well, oops, this can't be array name. This has to be sales. Now this time, this point, we are counting the uh, rows, right? Sales.length is actually, I'm going to do this anyways. It's debating, but I'm doing it. So sales 
dot length would be the length of this, right? So a row, you have to put zero and that will give you a length of five. The entire sales array, the rows, there's only four. So this one returns five, that's the amount of content in a row. This one returns four, that's the amount of columns, which is great because we need to go through each column. And so then I'm gonna do sales, uh, we need row first, row always comes first, row and then call. Is that what they, yep, row and then call. And that's gonna be equal to sum. Now a shorthand way of writing that is sum is equal to whatever sum used to be equal to plus the new value, let me fix that. All right. Now, once we have it all added up, that's where we're going to need to have some type of string because they specifically ask for a string as output. So I called mine info. So what I'll do is something like info is going to be equal uh, plus equal, right? So I'm just going to append to it. You could. Uh, and then I'm going to say it's plus equal to total or sum of sales. I don't know. Boom, and then I'm gonna do plus, and I wanna add to it whatever this sum is. Sum, okay, bam. There we are, there we are, that looks good. Oop, I need to indent this one more for readability. Okay, that's looking good. Obviously, we're not gonna wanna return null. Um, another thing that I need to keep in mind is once it hits the bottom, it's gonna loop back up. So I'm probably going to want some type of spacer. I'll do a comma. That's probably going to look weird. That's fine for now, though. And let me go ahead and return, what did I call it? Info. But I'm also, before I'm going to return it, just so I can debug this some, I'm going to do a system dot print uh, dot out and info. Cool. All right. Uh, does this get called yet? New game? Nope. We got to call it. Okay. So now I have a uh, bestseller. Oh, why did they not camel case this? Okay, let's see what I broke. Oh, no, this actually is looking reasonable. Okay, so there's a few issues. No, that looks good. That I have. First of all, I don't like that I'm ending with a comma here. It's kind of annoying. Um, <laughs> think, think. One alternative, guys, would just be to do a line character. Maybe I could do that. Um... And then how this is working, I want to step through this one more time. We are looping through the columns. So right away, we say column is equal to zero. That is this, column zero. We then set sum equal to zero. And then we have this inner loop. The inner loop is for the rows. We get the length of our array, which is how many rows, which is four. So this is four. So row has to be less than four. Row must start at zero. And then I say sum, which right now is equal to zero, is going to be equal, plus equal, means whatever sum used to be equal to, sales row, well, what is row right now? Row is zero. So, so row is zero, and column what? Z column is zero. So it's this number, 141, which is now super readable. And so, uh, no, 41, we add that. Now, we hit the bottom of this loop, and we go, ah, okay, zoop, we gotta go back to the top, is row still less than the length of sales yeah row is currently zero that is less than the length of sales so we add one to the row row is now one drop down and we say sum is equal to whatever it used to be equal to now it's equal to 41.49 plus the sales array row well what is row row is now one so bloop and column what is column column would still be zero plop and then we loop through all the columns. We hit the bottom, well, we hit right here finally, once we get to here, and then we append to our array, sum of sales plus, and you might write total here, I just made up a string, whatever, plus the actual value. Then I hit this and go, zoop, change the column, and we go plop, and we keep going. All right, let's do this one more time. Cool, I wish we knew uh, we rounded this, but I'll leave it for now. Onward.